Oliver excited to be in the tournament, and we told our guys, not everybody gets to do this. You look at the quality of teams that were left out of the tournament. There's a lot of good players not playing anymore. There's a lot of good teams not playing. So regardless of where we get sent, we're excited to go there. Spokane, I, we've had good uh, good runs out west. Uh, personally, I, you know, we've got a long flight out to Spokane. Charleston's got a longer flight. So don't know a ton about Charleston. Uh, Coach Kelsey's one of the better up in uh, – Coming young head coaches that play a pretty modern style of basketball, pretty similar to us, to be honest with you. I mean, their offense is top 60 in the country. Their pace of plays top 50. Their three point rates top 20. Like they're playing fast, spreading it out, taking a lot of threes. You know, I'm going to have to see exactly how they get it, but I'm about to see my staff's already working on uh, Charleston. And then obviously playing, you know, we're fortunate enough to get past Charleston and playing the winner of St. Mary's and um, Grand Canyon. Those are two teams out west. So we, we, we've played semi-neutral, you know, Arizona and Phoenix, played Purdue and Toronto where Zach Eady had plenty of fans. So we played neutrals that weren't very neutral. So if St. Mary's has a lot of fans, so be it. You get, we got to beat two good teams to get to uh, L.A., and uh, make it to the Sweet 16. So we're, I do like the fact we don't have to play till Friday. I think we can get our legs up under us a little bit more. You know, obviously we, we're trying to win the SEC tournament, but it might have been a blessing in disguise for an NCAA tournament run to get our legs a little more rested and not play until Friday it gets us there even more because we haven't had our full allotment of guys on no minute restriction since that Texas A&M game when we were playing pretty good basketball. So I think this this Friday will be the first time we've got everybody healthy, ready to go since that A&M game. So we're, we're excited for it. Got to get uh, get done with the Zoom so I can get, get to work uh, figuring out how to beat uh, Charleston. Charlie Potter. Yeah, hey, Coach. This is a little off topic, but UTSA announced that Coach Clonch was going to be their, their new head coach. Just what do you thought of the job that he's done this season? And is the expectation he'll stick around with you guys through the tournament? Yeah, he's definitely sticking around with us. This is his first tournament he's been in. He, he wants to make a run. I mean, he's been great for the program. You know, I talk about when the tide rises, all the boats rise. You know, we had a good year. I, obviously, we would like to have had a better year. And when you're comparing what we've done, the number one overall seed last year and two Sweet 16s in the previous three years, four SEC trophies in the previous three years. You know, some people may look at it as a little disappointing. We're, we're a four seed. They, they've Alabama's never been a four seed or higher in back-to-back -back tournaments in school history. You know, Austin, for us to lose the entire staff and then come in and lose, you know, 75, 80% of the roster, to do what we did this year is pretty good. And you got to give the staff a lot of credit, I think. You know, the AD at instead of San Antonio, I talked to Lisa for a little bit yesterday. I think Austin's going to be – Austin was a great head coach before he got here. I think he'll do a great job there. I'm super happy for him. Talked to him a lot over the last 24 hours about this. Like, I'm all for taking care of your players, whatever's best for them. You know, we found out Clowney's going to be a first-round pick. Like, you got to go. Like, find out Austin can get – a job this good in the American conference after one year with us, like it's, it's good job to take it. You need to go take it, but we need you locked in on trying to make as deep a run as we can in the NCAA tournament. So happy for Austin. He, he's great culture guy. He's great mind as a head coach brought a lot to the program. You know, we both learned from each other in the year he was here. I think he'll do a great job there. Nick Kelly. Yeah, Nate, this is a Charleston team that I think has won 12 in a row. And you guys obviously have uh, lost three of your last four. How, how do you kind of, I guess, stop their run? Nick, we may have lost you, so. Is that Nick or is that? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I think it was me. I don't know what you heard, but how, how do you stop their run? That's, I mean, 12 games they've won in a row. And for you guys get going on a run, having lost three of the last four. Yeah, they've obviously got a lot of momentum. I think they got the second longest winning streak in the country right now. And it's a pretty good league, too. So it's not like, you know, they've been playing bad teams. They're playing some 
I played in similar league in the Mac and Buffalo, like to, to win 12 games in a row against that caliber of teams. That's saying a lot. So they're, they're hot. Like I told our guys, you know, we, we've lost some games here in the last couple of weeks. We also haven't been healthy. This will be the first time we've got everybody available and we had everybody available last game, but it's almost like you're knocking the rust off a little bit with some of the guys that haven't been in as much. So, you know, it's a new season. A lot of teams are done. There's not that many teams left playing meaningful games. We're treating it like it's a whole new season, and we're playing a really good team. I mean, I've been in, on the other side of this. You know, I've been a 13 seed playing a four at Buffalo and came in and beat Arizona. So I, I've got a pretty good idea of the mindset of that group, and they're hungry. They, 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 I'm sure they can't wait to play us. They're excited. You know, this is a program that's been – really good for the last two years under coach Kelsey. So, you know, we're not going to necessarily look at they've won 12 in a row. They're on momentum. We're not, we're just, it's the first game of a new season and who comes ready to play for 40 minutes in that first game. Chase Goodbread. Coach, I wanted to ask if you could just kind of retrace when you identify defense as an issue for this team, because you've been talking about it really since the beginning of the season, but even before that, did you recognize preseason or even if it was when you finalized the roster that there could be an issue there? I mean, we talked about it from day one because two out of the last three years, we were third, 92nd, third. Everybody came here to win championships. The two years that we were third, we won four trophies in the SEC. The one year we were 92nd, we had some very quality wins, but we had some really bad losses. So we talked about it from day one, what it's going to take. The guys said the right things. We're all bought in. You know, early on, you know, we had some games where we didn't play the best defense in the non-conference. We also played a pretty tough schedule. I think maybe the first time it really got us was probably that Ohio State loss. And then I thought we bounced back and were a little better against Oregon. But, you know, the or Oregon's a tournament team. I mean, they're, they're in the NCAA tournament. So we, it's been a little up and down all year. You know, personnel-wise, I think we're better than what our numbers show. You know, it's a decision some guys are going to have to make. Like, how bad do I want to keep playing? Because uh, if, if you know, Charleston's a really good offensive team. If we don't come out and guard, you know, we're, we're, we Charleston's going to put some points us, up on us. And I don't like putting that much pressure on our offense every night out that we got to go score 100 points or whatever. So I think we've shown – the capability to be a quality defensive team enough. I mean, you go back and look at some of the better teams we played and, you know, we're up nine against Purdue on a neutral site. I think up six against Arizona on a semi-road game, pretty much an away game. Up at Creighton in a road game. Kind of go through it, what we were able to do against South Carolina. That's a really good team defensively. You know, what we've been able to when, – when we've been locked in and giving our best effort, we've been all right. Maybe not top three, but not, you know, where we are. we we got to do it for two straight games, 40 minutes a game. We do it for two straight games at 40 minutes a game. We'll, we'll be playing in L.A. the following weekend. Tony. Nate, you mentioned that they play a little bit like you – do you like that in terms of preparation, or is that going to be tough to to guard against given the defensive struggles lately? I mean, I think we play the most modern style of basketball in the country. They're pretty similar, like I said. So I think they're playing a brand of basketball that makes the most sense how to play. I think it's the toughest one to guard. I mean, we had the number one offense in the country the last time we were fully healthy against a and We were number one by a long shot. So – I, it, it in that regard, it's a hard offense to guard. Now I got to figure out how they get their threes. Personnel, I got to sit down and as soon as I get off this with this with you, I'm going to get up with my staff who's been on and since it was announced. But <clears throat> I, I I think it's a hard system to guard. I got to figure out how they get them. But but I I think that we guard it every day in practice, so we do get a little bit. Of help now, it's the same going the other way. Charleston guards something similar, so they're, you know, their their offense is 
ranked a lot higher than their defense, similar to ours. I think both of us will have a little bit of an advantage because we guard something somewhere every day in practice, and we're just going to have to see who, who does a better job. Last one, Jack. Yeah, now you have a, some guys on this team, obviously, last year with some NCAA tournament experience. Latrell and Mark have some with mid-major teams, too. What have they kind of been telling their their teammates where, uh, uh, you know, they're going into this for their first time? Look, uh, yeah, we kind of went around and talked about who's played in the tournament. There's only four scholarship guys that have played in the tournament, our three from last year, and then um, Trelly out at Fullerton. Uh, Wagay was on the West Virginia team, but he was injured and didn't play. So, you know, they're, they didn't, we, they didn't talk a ton yet. I'm sure they will be talking as we go on, you know, we, we reconvene to go over how to beat Charleston, but, you know, I, I, I think it helps to have some tournament experience, but a little bit, it helps. The, the biggest thing is, you know, how, how much do we want to play for each other? How much do we want to keep playing together? How good a defense do you want to play? Cause at the end of the day, there's a lot of distractions around the NCAA tournament, which makes it great. It's the best sporting event on the planet. Like, you know, over a three-week stretch, it's all eyes in the world and sports are all on this. So it's an unbelievable sporting event that these guys will remember for the rest of their lives. But there's 40 minutes where the best team is going to come out on top. And there's another 40 minutes where the best team comes out on top. So – the best thing we can do is eliminate all those distractions as much as possible. Enjoy the environment in the moment without letting it be a big distraction and get locked in on what we got to do for the 40 minutes uh, both games. Thank you, Coach.